I always like to pull and to eat a little bit of the meat at the end. I just can't help myself. Almost has no flavor to it. It's just like a hot protein. No. <laughs> All right, guys, today we're gonna to be making a turkey stock, a little twist of it that I developed for the Thanksgiving issue. I think it's just an overall home run of a turkey stock you can make for any time of the year. What we start with is a little bit of chicken wings and turkey wings that you can get from a butcher shop. I like to add a smoked ham hock to it too. It's kind of my little curveball. So let's get that going. So we're gonna take these wings, we're gonna drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil, about one tablespoon, just a pinch of salt, and then just coat them around. All right, so we're gonna put the wings in the oven. I like to place them on the upper half of the rack of the oven space. A little hotter up there. Now while the wings are going, we're gonna start our mirepoix, which we're gonna do a little bit of celery. Two medium carrots, I have one large, so we're gonna use that. I like to add an onion. That's basically the base of the mirepoix. I also do a little bit of mushroom and some garlic. And I like cremini. If you wanna jazz it up, you know, you can put a little maitake. They're real big flavor boosters. With that last tablespoon of olive oil, I'm gonna get it going on a medium heat. So yeah, we got the mirepoix and all our veg that we cut up. I took the garlic, I halved it, and I like to just place them, oh God, a little face down right on it. The onions, face down, let that, let that flesh get nice and caramelized. I like to add just a pinch of salt. We're gonna let this sweat out for about 15 minutes, uh, just stirring occasionally, keeping an eye on it, make sure you don't want it to burn. Or you want it like a nice blonde caramelization. Any burning, it's just gonna, I don't wanna say ruin, but ruin, ruin your stock. All right guys, so it's been 10 minutes. We're gonna pull the wings out real quick and just I like to give them a turn. Throw a pair of tongs. By the time we're done roasting, these will be nice and golden brown, which will help give, again, some flavor, a lot of flavor to the stock, as well as that nice golden color. Right, Andy? Yes. All right, so it's been 40 minutes, 45 minutes. I've been turning the wings every 10 minutes. Yeah. Nice and golden all over. We're gonna take that fat that we rendered out, there's no point in dumping it back into the stock. And I'm just gonna pour it off into here. Check on our veg. It's nice and sweated up. We got a nice little color on the, on the onion. And that's what we're looking for. So now we're gonna add one smoked ham hock, peppercorns, a little bit of parsley, leaves, stems and all, some fresh bay leaves. And we'll stir that around. And then we're gonna add about a quarter cup of wine. And here you can turn the heat up just, just a little bit if you'd like. So now that our wine is pretty much all evaporated, we're gonna go ahead and add the wings. All this drippings that caramelized on the pan, that's all delicious stuff. So what I like to do is just add a little bit of water to that and I'll scrape it up a little bit with a fish spat. If you do this while it's still hot, it'll come off a lot easier. That'll add just some real nice character, flavor, and color to the dish. So now we're all set, we got our wings in there, we got our hock in there, we got all our mirepoix, our veg, so only thing left is the water. So here we go, I'm just gonna pour this with a little confidence real quick. I add a pinch of salt. A lot of schools, you know, school of thought, they won't add salt until the end. That's great. Once the salt's in, you can't get it back. So it is smart to season your stock when it's finished. All right, so we got our stock brought up to a boil, uh, a full boil, and then now I'm just gonna reduce it to a simmer. You don't want it to be still, you want some bubblage, some bubbling. We're gonna let this go for about three and a half, four hours. It should reduce by half. Meat starts to break down at 160 degrees where the connective tissue and the joints will start to break apart and they'll pull the collagen out and they'll pull the gelatin out and that's what's gonna give that nice body and flavor to the stock. So this is the other stock that I've been working on. All ready to be strained. This is a spider. You can use a slotted spoon or even some tongs or something. But I like to get all the solids out before I go to the strainer. And there's that ham hock just falling apart. Like I said, I always do like to eat a little piece of the meat because it just looks so good. But it's not. <laughs> it's a super dry, no flavor. But, so that's the bulk of, uh, of, the, of the mass in the stock. So we, we can just discard this. Um, I have yet to find a real good use for it. I'm sure if someone knows, put it in the comment section. There's still a lot of bits floating around in there, the small stuff that I couldn't get with the spider. I have another pot set up with a fine mesh strainer, so we'll just pour that through. You can smell that little bit of smokiness from the hock. Oh yeah, I could drink this every day. So this is the stock after it's been in the fridge overnight. It's set up, the fat's on top. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to skim off as much of that as possible. I mean, it's not super necessary, but uh, I like to leave just a little bit, but uh, you know, get out as much as you can. So that's what I was talking about with all the, the gelatin 
coming out of those the knuckles and the wings and in the ham hock. Should have that nice jiggle to it. That's good stock to me. So from here, I like to put it into some quart containers and into some pint containers. So yeah, look at that. Just a beautiful thing. I'm a big soup guy. You come home on a weeknight and you know you want to make a stock or even just like a braise or something. Instead of having water, you got this super rich, flavorful, very good for you in my opinion, broth to add to a quick dinner or for the holidays. You know, it just really takes anything you're cooking and just adds a whole other layer of flavor. Yeah, and you don't want to go wasting any. Get it all out. All right, so there we go. We started off with two gallons of water, yielded up with one gallon of stock, got them quartered up, keep them in your fridge, keep them in your freezer, and uh, you're good to go.